I'm going to kick off with a bit of a risotto, a bit of a smoked haddock risotto. Okay. Let's turn on my induction hog. I've prepared all the vegetables beforehand, and this is a great thing to do if you're going to start to cook. So a quick spin around, we've got smoked haddock, we've got some lemon, some spinach, some leeks, a bit of garlic, some peas, um, some parmesan, which we're going to grate into it, arborio rice, that's the risotto rice, a little bit of milk and some creme fraiche. This is the reduced fat one, you can find them in all the supermarkets. So just heat up some oil in a pan. I'm going to put in our leeks, so I've got chopped up here. Add a little bit of garlic, sweating the leeks off like that. We don't really want really want too much colour on them. We'll put in the garlic. It's better to get all these chopped up and prepared beforehand. We can enrich it later with the uh, creme fraiche. I'm going to put in the the arborio rice straight into the pan. Give it a good stir around. Mix it up. Get the flavours in there. We're going to season that with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. That's mixing around. And then we're going to add in some vegetable stock. This is just like from a stock you can get any shop, but you can make your own. We'll just pour that in a bit at a time like that, mix it around, so we'll just turn that down a little bit. And we're going to put in some milk. Now ordinarily if you're making a risotto, the classic way is not to use any milk or cream, just to, um, just to use your stock. Let's bring that back to the boil a bit. Anyway, we're going to transfer it to a dish, oven proof dish. We're going to cover it with foil and we're going to pop it in the oven and we'll get on with another dish while this is cooking away. I'm going to put the smoked haddock on top. I'm going to put a bit of lemon juice in there as well. Just a couple of lemon juice and give it a good squeeze making sure we don't get any pips in. There we go. And then we'll pop a bit of aluminium foil on the top, like so. Give it a wrap up tight. Pop it into the oven. And leave it to cook. I'm going to cook a sea bass dish now. Um, so. This is a ratatouille type dish, Provençal. So we've got spinach, we've got some artichokes. Now I've cheated here, I've not bought globe artichokes, they're not really in season quite, but these are just out of a jar of oil, so it's easily you know, picked up in a, in a supermarket. We've got some diced up uh, aubergines, some diced uh, courgettes, some diced peppers. I've just managed to get orange ones and green ones, but you can get Make, it, make the colour really nice, have some yellow ones in there as well, and some red ones. There's a bit of onion there, and we've got some cherry tomatoes. Then I've got these mixed herbs here, these are dried. Uh, I like using these in this sort of dish because they're going to cook in the ratatouille type uh, dish, or vegetable dish, infused because they're quite strong. So we've got, we've got some thyme, we've got some basil, we've got some oregano. Um, Marjoram, so they're, they're typical sort of herbs. You can just go and buy herbs of the Provence, you can get those in the bigger supermarkets. Then of course we've got our sea bass. So I'm gonna start off, and I'm gonna put on my sort of ratatouille mixed vegetable to begin with. A saucepan here, put that on, the heat. A little bit of oil. So then we're gonna pop in the vegetables. Keep the tomatoes to the end. We'll put in the harder ones first, so that's the peppers and the onions, they go in first. 
and we'll just let those cook for a bit. Again, great to get all these things chopped up before you start cooking. Again, a little bit of salt and pepper. If you don't want to, it's not taking too much salt, then perhaps just use mainly pepper and no salt at all if you don't want to do that, it's up to you entirely. So we'll give that a good stir around and we'll just get those cooking away. There we go. I'm going to add in the, the mixed herbs here. You can use fresh ones if you want to. They, it is great to use fresh herbs, but no shame in using dried herbs. Good mix around. I can really smell it there. It's a shame you can't smell these lovely flavours all bouncing out of the pan on this beautifully sunny afternoon. Makes me feel like I'm in the south of France. Other vegetables. I won't put the artichokes in yet because they are cooked, having been in the uh, oil. Um, I'm going to put in these other ones, the, the rest of the, the courgettes and the aubergine. Now, these are quite simple dishes. My typical success really, if you're going to cook these on a, on a school night, is to perhaps have a bit of a prep day or a prep afternoon where you, you prep things up a day or two in advance, not too far. You can really smell the flavours coming now. And, and for, for vegetables like courgettes and aubergines, they don't really have much of a flavour until you start to caramelise the sugars that are within them and there isn't a lot in them. I am going to give it a squirt of um, tomato puree. So there we go. Quick squirt, and we'll mix that around. Just give it a good mix around like that. And then we'll put in a bit of vegetable stock again. And we'll let that cook down. Put it down the heat so it's cooking away gently for a minute. You can see the, the lovely colour coming on it now. Beautiful. Got some chopped garlic here, we'll just put a bit in. Good mix around. Just let those flavours all develop. I'm going to take these tomatoes now, these are little cherry tomatoes, they're plum tomatoes, cut them in half and we'll pop those in, that sort of gives it a bit of an edge. They are quite sweet, cherry tomatoes, more calories in cherry tomatoes than in any other tomatoes. So mix those in and, and then I'm going to take that off. You notice I'm keeping my vegetables nice and crisp, I like that. You can cook them a bit more if you want to, but I find it's better for uh, texture, digestion. I'm going to take that off now. We'll just put it on there to cool down a bit. And I'm going to put my pan on to warm up to cook my sea bass. But meanwhile, I'm going to pop these artichokes in and they can be warming. And I've got a handful of spinach here also. We'll pop that all in there. And I've got a lid. So I'll put the lid on and the heat from the, the cooked vegetables will keep on going and hopefully soften or wilt the uh, spinach. Right, now then. The sea bass. So you get two in a pack if you buy these in the supermarket. Just check for any fins like that, which might be, have bones in, which you don't want. They've already been pin boned, the bones are all out. So easy to cook, no heads, no tails, no eyes. And I'll just get another knife. Give it a quick 
stop it. Just clean the blade. You never know, you might get a few iron filings if you're not careful. Right, there's the fillet. It's also been scaled, so then we're going to slash it. We don't want to cut all the way through, but we do want to cut through the flesh or the skin into the flesh from the through the skin, because otherwise, when we put it in to sear it in the pan, if we don't do that, then the fish will curl up, and we don't really want that. So again, a little bit of oil in the pan, cook it away. Just get it nice and hot. I'll move this out of the way because we won't be needing that again now. I'm just going to season this a little bit with some pepper. Keep it, keep it nice and high. A little bit of salt, not too much. Okay, we're there, we're going to put it into the pan now. So we put it in this side down because we want to sear it, get a bit of crispy skin. And you probably use a, a fish slice. I use my trusty palette knife. But this you can take right under the fillet and flip it over. So that just takes a couple of minutes. Now I have got a recipe where, whereby you can prep the fish like I just did. And then you can put it onto a baking sheet and put it through the oven in a hot oven and sear it that way. That's a good way of doing it if you're not confident to um, cook on the top like this. But I prefer this way because I'm, I'm the, it's more in control of it. Or I like to think I am anyway. I flip it over. You can see the nice browning on the skin there and around the edges. That's the crisp stuff. Gives you an effect which is like having a mini sort of um, crackling on the outside of your fish. So it's, a couple of, it's another texture which is also important when we're cooking and tasting. Textures, the flavours, the aroma. Wonderful. There we are, nice white plate. No boards, no slates. We have to support the potteries, don't we? So that's just eating through now. If you see the spinach, it's just wilting down. But again, I don't want it to go too far. So I'm going to give that a quick taste now. You see it's quite dry, there's no sauce, because this is that sort of dish really. Typical sort of Mediterranean. And that's great. So I'm now going to serve it up. Onto the plate here. There we go. Keep it nice and tidy. So let's, let's get this back on now, we'll just finish it off. What we could do, we could cut that in half and put two fillets on, if we wanted to do that. We could do that I suppose. Let's just put it onto the board and give it a go. We'll give the knife a wipe. A bit of a... And we'll just cut it on the slant there, straight through. We'll put the fillets on there like that. And then I've got a little secret weapon here. I've been out picking wild garlic, and this is a wild garlic oil. It's just wild garlic leaves, and they're washed, and then put into a liquidizer, 
with some uh, rapeseed oil and just that's the ordinary vegetable oil that you buy, they're not the expensive one. Um, and then we just drizzle a bit on. Done. Okay, so that's our first dish. Sea bass with Mediterranean vegetables with a garlic uh, oil. So that's just uh, another couple of minutes and we can finish that dish off. It's a very simple dish that we're going to do next. Well, they're all pretty simple dishes actually. Um, this is a cod fillet. That's a frozen fillet. It's come out of a, a freezer bag from a, one of the discounters. We're going to pan fry that. Um, and we're going to make a dressing to go with it that's uh, honey, oranges, orange zest, some juice, some grain mustard and some, then some lentils scattered on the plate afterwards. So I'm going to put the pan on there. Again this, this dish, um, I've got a recipe which, which, is, which you can see. It's, it's, uh, I've actually done it with pollock and instead of putting it into a pan, you can bake it in the oven. So again, very easy to do that. It's more like it's been poached really because it's put into a, a foil pack and baked in the oven so it steams in its own juices. But for the benefit of the day, we're just going to cook it in the pan. In fact, I think we might poach it. That might be a good idea. Um, I'll get a bit of water, put some water in the pan, and we'll put a bit of lemon juice in as well. Of uh, cider vinegar would be quite nice, just a sprinkle of that. Okay, so we're going to put the, the cod in there, turn that down if you want it to poach. Take that right down. And then with this, we're going to make a dressing. So I'm going to mix that up. in this one of these bowls. So, like I said, we've got uh, grain mustard. So I'm going to put grain mustard. I've got the orange zest. Put the honey in. I'm going to put some orange juice in. I'm going to put the olive oil in. Give it a good old whisk up. Don't need too much. So we just mix it together. Quick whisk together like that. Get a bit messy this afternoon. Great, so that's almost there. Just going to heat that through a bit further. Another plate. Just going to check my risotto again. I think that's ready now. Oh, yes. We'll just finish this dish off first. So the dressing's ready. And it's just a question of assembling it all now. 
Right. I'm going to take that off. That's it. Okay. Right. Okay. So for this part of it, what I'm going to do is I'm really just heating up the lentils. And I've got watercress here to go into the dish as well. So make sure I've drained all my honey. Um, and a bit of orange juice again. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm just going to put these lentils in. I've already cooked them. I think about 20 minutes. Now I'll add a bit of water there as well. A little bit of oil. So that's just mixing around nicely and getting red hot. So there we go. So I'm using green lentils. I bought them from an Asian grocer. Not the yellow, the uh, orange ones or the yellow ones, whatever you call them. And then just drop in the, this is a mix of rocket and actual um, watercress. And I'll give it another bit of a squeeze of the juice out of the orange. But um, really, poi lentils, if you can, if they're in your budget, use those. They are the dark ones that come from France. Wilt it a little bit, just the watercress, keep its colour still. And then we'll screw that onto the plate like so. All the colours going on there. Next we'll put the fish on. Now it's not a very big piece of fish, but only, it's only for this demonstration really, but you could always have a couple of pieces if you wanted to. Um, and then Put that over there again, just not on, the, on there. And we'll put this lovely dressing on. Just spoon that over the top. And we'll bring it over here so you can see it. All the colours there. then just to top this off, I've got some lovely mint growing on the windowsill here. We'll drop some mint on. Just to make it more attractive. Great. Another dish done. So we're going to finish off our risotto now. There. Let's just give a quick clean of the board again. Quick wipe. I'm going to take out the fish. Give it a good mix, and we're going to put in some creme fraiche, some spinach, some peas. Got a few peas here, then put those in. Spinach in. We'll put in the creme fraiche just to enrich it. Do a good mix up. Do dry. You can always do that if you've got plenty of stock or water, even will do. Um, so a bit of a mix around there. Now I'm going to pop that back in the oven for it. two minutes. Just to wilt that spinach a little bit more. 
Great. So that's finished with. That's finished with. You're not off our knife. Quick wipe of the board. And we're going to finish it by grating a little bit of uh, Parmesan. Um, oh, it's over here. Yeah, I remember. So I'm going to just do some of that now on the board, ready. There we are. That one. Okay, should be there now. So let's just give that a bit of a mix up. Now you can uh, flake up the fish if you want to do that. Sometimes that makes it go. We'll spoon it onto the plate there. Portion. On this one we'll take the knife again and we'll cut it into maybe some fingers. Then we'll arrange them on the plate like so. Then we'll finish off with some Parmesan cheese. And then while we're at it, I've got some herbs here from the garden. Nice fresh chives out of the garden. We'll chop a few of those up. I'll just put those on. So that's our third fish dish for today. Smoked haddock. Risotto. Right, our fourth and final dish for today is uh, another sea bass dish. And this is the, probably the most simple of all the dishes that I'm going to cook today. Okay, I'm going to put a bit of oil in the pan. Same as before, take my fillet, score with the knife, now when that heats up, let's season our fish, a bit of pepper, a bit of salt, and then we're going to uh, sear that. Um, I'm going to make a dressing with some um, French mustard in it, Dijon mustard and lemon juice. In fact, I'm going to squeeze a bit of lemon juice into the back of the fish. So that's quite nice. So if you're cooking for a dinner party, it's good to do those sort of jobs previously and let the, the lemon juice soak into the fish. Really. So again, skin side down into the pan as it sizzles away there. That's just going to sear away. It takes a couple of minutes only. But again, you could do that through the oven. 200 degrees, straight through. Get it hot the oven first, onto a tray into a dish, oil, um, and then yeah, so I'm going to make, this is another dressing, this one, so these things are easy because you can get them made beforehand, uh, I'm going to mix up another dressing, so 
So this side's French mustard, Dijon mustard, oil. I'm going to mix this one up a bit. I'm going to put a bit of uh, olive oil in because I'm not cooking with it. I don't believe in cooking in olive oil. It's too precious. We'll just mix that around. Fish is ready to flip over. I think. Yeah. There we go. Just drop in some of the lemon. And now this time we will do this right. If you can find it. A nice little sieve here. So we'll squeeze our lemon through the sieve. And this will be the side of the lemon that has no pips in it anyway. So don't worry about that. If you find it difficult squeezing lemons like this, what you can do is you can actually um, put your, your sieve over a, a bowl or a cup and um, use a fork. Just stick a fork in it and crank it round the fork. That's as good as any uh, lemon squeezer. Good mix up. Like so. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the vinegar from the um, capers which are going into the sauce. Now you could, you could just use white wine vinegar, but hey, why waste a product that's already there? We give that a good mix. I'm actually going to put in, oh, I'll use a bit of this veg stock I think, that's okay. You could use water, but it's there, we might as well use it. Lovely. Okay, so, I haven't got a plate. Oh. I'm going to use a bowl this time, so. Take that out of the way now. Let's give, I've got some uh, some wild garlic. I've picked on my walk the other morning in the woods, so give those a rinse. We'll put those into our bowl. And our fish is ready now, so we'll take that out. Rest it on the board again. Pour out this oil. Warm up my capers. It's really good, I just like the smell. The smell is just so pungent. Have another passion as well. If I put lemon juice in there and Worcestershire sauce and a bit of butter, then it is a really lovely dish. But we'll do that another time. So the fish, I'm going to cut it again. We'll cut it this way. Straight through. Put it in the centre of the plate there. Put some of our capers on. A spoon. Here's my spoon. Now we'll put on the dressing. Drizzle that all around it. A 
and just top it off with some more of these capers. Now this is really pretty, we've got some wild garlic flowers, this chuck goes in, great. Makes a really nice looking dish. Quick wipe around the plate, pick up any drips. So there you have it, sea bass with a caper dressing and wild garlic. Okay, see you next time.